Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. In this video, we're going to take a look at kind of an evolved example of finding the area between polar curves. Here we're taking a look at a polar function known as a limousine. It's uh, r equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta. And depending on the coefficients there, these can sometimes have an inner loop like this one does. So we have an outer loop and an inner loop. And ultimately what we're trying to do is find the total area enclosed by the outer loop of the curve, but not the inner loop. In order to do that, we're going to use the formula for the area enclosed by a polar function. This is derived from the area of a sector of a circle, 1 half r squared theta. And so here, where r is not a constant, it's a function of theta, and it can get longer or shorter. So we integrate that from alpha to beta, the bounds of the curve in theta. And we have 1 half r squared theta d theta from alpha to beta. What we're really looking at here is sort of an area between curves, because when we use this area formula in a polar, it's calculating the area between the polar curve and the pole. So as we extend out from the, from the pole this way, and we rotate along in a positive theta direction, we're summing up these little sectors of areas we go. However, we, we're cutting through our inner loop there, as we see. So what we need to do is to find the area inside the outer curve. And we're going to do the upper half of it only here. And then we're going to find the area inside the inner curve and subtract it. So it's, so it's on the order of area between curves with functions. When we say it's the upper curve minus the lower curve, we're doing the outer curve minus the inner curve over the appropriate bounds. The bounds are a little tricky. Um, what we want to do is figure out here, where is this graph crossing the pole, for starters? And remember, when we say, when we say at the pole, that means r equals 0. So we get the equation 1 plus 2 cosine theta is 0, or cosine theta is negative 1 half. So that's a special angle case there. So you could probably just do that thinking about it a little bit. Our solutions there are going to be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And then there are a couple other places that we're interested in. And that's where the graph is intersecting the, sometimes we call it the polar axis, the positive x-axis here. And the, the first place is at 0. So, so the integral that's going to calculate the area enclosed by the outer curve can be stated at this point, And it's the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3, 1 half times r squared d theta. So that would give us the, the area of the upper region here in this case. And then from that, we need to subtract the area inside of the, of the inner loop, just the upper half again. So, so what I've done so far at this point, if we sketch it up, is I'm calculating this region here. And we want to subtract a smaller region inside of the inner loop out of it, this one here. So I have to set up another integral to do that. It's the same polar function, but the bounds are, if we follow it, the, the, the flow of the curve, the, the point here where it's hitting the polar axis, that is, that's uh, theta equals pi. And then it's coming through the pole again at 4 pi over 3. So I need to subtract 1 half the integral from pi to 4 pi over 3 of the same integrand function. And then in order to find the, the total area enclosed, we use symmetry. We're going to double the whole thing. So we can say times 2. And that'll just cancel with the 1 half factors, which will clean things up a little bit for us. But when you're doing areas between it, curves and, and polar functions, you want to do as, as little as possible with the actual integral and use symmetry as much as possible when you're making these, these polar area calculations. So 
From there we obtain then the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3, 1 plus 4 cosine theta plus 4 cosine theta squared and then we'll subtract our second integral same integrand function bounds over here for pi to 4 pi over 3 So our next step is, if we look inside of the integrand functions, is that we have this, we have this cosine squared inside of there, which is whenever you deal with a term of sine squared or cosine squared, we need to use the power reduction formula. So for the cosine squared, it's 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So we're going to apply that and rewrite our function. We need a little bit more space here. And so when we do that, we have 4 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So it's 2, we have a plus 1 in there, so it's 3 plus 4 cosine theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. And we're subtracting the other one, the area inside the inner loop. Same function. So we can finally get to doing the, the integral here. And for our first one, the area inside the the outer loop, we have 3 theta plus 4 sine theta plus sine of 2 theta. And that's going from 0 to 2 pi over 3. And then if we go ahead and just let's evaluate that much. So if we do that, we have 2 pi. 3 times theta plus 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 so that's 4 times square root of 3 over 2 plus the sine of 4 pi over 3 which is minus the square root of 3 over 2 and so we have 2 pi plus 2 square root of 3 minus square root of 3 over 2. So 2 pi plus 3 square root of 3 over 2 is the area inside the outer curve but not inside the inner. So, so that's, that's our outer area. And then we're going to subtract from that same function, different bounds. So we're going to 3 theta plus 4 sine theta plus sine 2 theta from pi to 4 pi over 3. And so our evaluation here is 4 pi. 4 times the sine of 4 pi over 3, so it's going to be 4 times negative square root of 3 over 2, so it's negative 2 square root of 3, plus the sine of 8 pi over 3, which is square root of 3 over 2. Now on the lower bound and the last one, we got a value of 0, but here we don't, so we subtract that. We have 3 pi, 4 times the sine of pi is 0, and sine of 2 pi is 0. So the area inside of the inner loop, when we clean that up, is 1 pi 
minus 3 squared of 3 over 2. So we've done them separately here. It's a lot of writing, but now what we're going to do is subtract the outer minus the inner. So if we look here, we have some like terms. So 2 pi minus pi is pi. And then we have 3 squared of 3 over 2 minus a negative 3 squared of 3 over 2. So it's going to be plus 3 times the square root of 3 as our total area. That gives us an area of approximately 8.34, roughly, which looks reasonable given our, our particular graph. And what we actually calculated at the end of the day was the area inside the Lima, Lima song graph, but outside of that inner loop, that region there, that's what we found. So pretty, pretty involved case of finding the area between polar curves, but it all kind of goes back to one half r squared theta. Uh, and you just have to make sure you do your integrals right. Some trig tricks you have to remember from early in your, your calc life as well as you're getting to the end of these things. If you'd like to learn more about the calculus of polar functions or calculus in general, you can find those in my calculus textbooks available on Amazon for a nice price. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And until next time, I'm Pete Clark.